Ryan stats. No, we were good. I downloaded it, we're good. <laughs> I have a little bit of a man crush on him. He's, great guy. He's awesome such a guy. Beast, yeah, great man. guy. He's a great guy. He played, he played D1 for Augusta when they were in the, in the Big South. He was super successful. He, he worked for Georgia Pacific in Atlanta. His wife works for Verizon and is so high up. She does, she does so well. He just, she just said, quit your job and go follow your passion. And so he got a teaching certificate, and co he's been coaching for like 15 years now. But 12 in Somerville, they were in uh, uh, Wilmington before this, and she got transferred here. But he uh, he coached at Laney High School. And so he said the beginning of every season, just a big box would come with all Jordan shoes, everything. Yeah. Wait, watch, wait till you see him interact with his kids, man. It's like, there's, he's never yelled at a kid in his life. He's got a nickname for every dude on his roster. And like, they just had so much fun. It was so cool. Easy to say when they're winning, but I saw him when he was losing. It was the same, same dude win was wrong. And then the guy, the guy with the white beard, used to be the head coach at Stratford. And then the guy, the little guy, right up there, he used to, he was the head coach after Ronnie at Fort Dorcha at, at West Ashley. So he's got like three head coaches on his staff. We'll do it live when we start. Really? Oh, okay. It doesn't matter. Right? Yeah. Hey, Vince, are we going live or uh, do you want to pre-record it? Live. Live, okay. Awesome. The clock says 7.35. I have no idea if that's correct or not. But. Yeah, I mean, what? So we're, we're five minutes out. We can't tip off till 8.35, he said? Uh, it's 8.25 right now.
Will Lou Gray Opportunity School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. We welcome you in to Fort Norchester High School. It's Will Lou Gray Opportunity School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet, Fort Norchester, Somerville, Jack Longshop sit alongside the king of sports here in the low country, Scott Eisberg. The two favorite words for high school basketball coach, region play. But this matchup, the rivalry, it's them back decades. Guys. Yeah, it goes way back. Everybody in here knows about it. And it seems like everybody in town is in this gym right now. There is not a seat to be found in here, which is fantastic for low country basketball. And they've got a great showdown, only about 10 miles separating these two schools. When you talk about the showdown, there are some studs on the hardwood tonight. And we got to talk about the young point guard, the junior, Melvin Teal. What stands out to him, T. Scotty? Everything. He is the leader of this team. He is the lifeblood of this team. He is the guy that college coaches are coming out to see. Somerville rolls as he rolls. Well, and for Fort Dorchester, you want to talk about a guy that's kind of wearing a big burden on his shoulders. Kaz Williams, he's averaging 17 points a night. Yeah, he's the guy. He's the guy with experience. He's the guy that Thomas McElveen leans on. Now, he's got a supporting cast. They've got to stand up next to him, though, because he is uh, the star that Somerville knows is the star. Well, don't go anywhere. On the other side of this break, we're going to show you these superstars. Fort Dorchester, Somerville, the rivalry, it's real. It's the Will Lou Gray Opportunity School Hoops driven by Cruz, Chevrolet, Fort D, Somerville. Scotty, Somerville, they're the number two team in the state of South Carolina at the 5A level for a reason. If you're Fort Dorchester, head coach Thomas McElveen, I mean, David Long's got a group that's wildly successful. Yeah. How's he been able to build this program as quickly as he has? Well, you know, it helps when you've got athletes, and he's got athletes, and they know how to win. They played football. I mean, this is a football team that went all the way to the lower state championship. Guys on this team played on that team. He says to us, it's, it's winning culture. We've got winning culture at Somerville. These guys know how to win. The pressure of this is not going to get to them. They've played on TV before on the football field. They've played in front of big crowds before. So needless to say, we're ready to roll with the Somerville Green Wave. Well, Thomas McElvin, you know, talk about pressure. He's on phase. Two years ago, it was his team in the state championship. And tonight, they've got quite the task in front of them. 
Yeah, well, he's already won the attire battle for the night. His jacket <laughs> definitely beats David Long's pullover, no question about it. But Thomas mclevine has been here a long time. He's a lifelong low country guy. He knows what it takes to win. Well, what is it going to take to win? We're going to show you the keys to the game brought to you by Cruz Chevrolet on the Rivers, just north of Northwoods Wall. you got a friend at Cruz Chevy. Somerville, it's understood what they need to bring to the table. Yeah, no doubt about it. Somerville has the numbers. You got to roll with it. They've got five in, five out, five in, five out substitutions. It's like line changes in hockey. You got to roll with that, and that's what he does. He tries to let them run around like their hair is on fire and then just see what happens. Fort Dorchester's got quite the task in front. They got to get out to a quick start. It's understood for the backcourt of the likes of Melvin Teal, who's crossing the timeline as we speak. We're off and up, off to the races. Yeah, no doubt. When you look at Melvin Teal, I mean, he just looks like athlete. <laughs> I, you, you could look at him and go, well, he's their starting running back. He's a guy that you can go, well, he, you know, he, he can do whatever you need in <laughs> athletics. He has got the build for it. Well, the starting five for the Somerville Green Wave, they've started every game of the season to this point. Yannick Smith, the superstar wide receiver, and an absolute phenom on the heart of it as well. Point guard Melvin Teal, shooting guard KJ Brown, man in the anchoring the front court to be Warren Nelson and Yasir Smith. Warren Nelson's the guy you gotta watch. He's got the green light to shoot whenever he wants to shoot. Talk about a guy that can fill it up. There's Kaz Williams, our player to watch. The first two points of the night. Kaz Williams averaging 17 a night. Was never a doubt. Every shot, the good shot. They find the ball back in number one's hands, and he's Boom. a bump it away. That didn't take long to get a dunk in the crowd <laughs> into it. You said it early. Fort Dorchester has to start well. They started well. Two plays, two nice lay-ins, one a dunk for Kaz, and this place is rocking. Those two points brought to you by West Shore Home, America's most admired home remodeling brand, and on cue. The big bully that is Melvin Teal with Somerville's first two points of the night. Yeah, he's only got one college offer right now, a major college offer. A, a Division two is, is his best offer, Flagler, which is ironic because former James Island head coach Brady Shuck offered him. Uh, but they say Division one coaches are raving about him. They all watched him at the round ball. Guys like USC and CFC players. Talk about a guy with a clip. That three, a little errant from K.J. Brown, and it's Kaz Williams back off to the races. He's looking for an and one. K.J. Brown's looking for a big-time charge. No doubt about it, if you are Kaz, you do not want to get in foul trouble tonight, but that was unquestionably a charge. Well, how do we not show you the second basket of the game from Kaz Williams? A dunk that had Fort Dorchester High School absolutely shaking. He brought the house down. Yeah, that was pretty good right there for Kaz Williams to be uh, a guy who electrifies the crowd. Oh, and then we get one right back. <laughs> whoop, whoop, alley-oop. There is your X Factor, Warren Peanut Nelson. Yep. Yeah, you know, we, we talked about his range. He didn't need any range on that. He just needed range on his ups. This is from KJ Brown. Absolute diamond, it is Brown. That corrals the rebound. Teal, beautiful full court pass for Yannick Smith. Yannick Smith, he's the leading court scorer for the Green Wave, averaging 19 a night. Those are his first two. Man, we have got an up and down game here tonight, Jack. This is not gonna be set it up in your half court and wait. This is gonna be run and gun. Yannick Smith, though, I mean, he is just an athlete, elite athlete. Look the Yannick Smith pass. He's a receiver on the gridiron, doing his best QB impression as he throws a dime to Warren Nelson. Yeah, Yannick Smith going to play football, already signed with East Carolina. Mike Houston, former Citadel head coach, coming down and getting a wide receiver from here in Somerville. And let me tell you, he's going to be special. And, and, and you might not want to let the basketball coach see him. He's one of those guys that might get like a Bruce Ellington type. Spot on impression, and, and to Yannick is a guy that like it was a really difficult decision when it came down to I'm gonna chase the football or basketball passion at the collegiate level because David Long tells us he had plenty of basketball offers. That true love on the gridiron was tough to get him away. You know, it's so hard for guys just because there's so many more opportunities to play professionally in the football ranks. I mean, you just you look at it, and on a field you've got 22 guys plus specialists. It, there's just more opportunity. It, it's what pulled Bruce Ellington over, and you know what? He ended up making it to the NFL. 
Region 6 5A Player of the Year, Yannick Smith. He's at the top of that 31 press. Fort Dorchester doing a good job of moving it around, and Taz Williams fires up the three. And it's Yannick Smith that escapes with it. There was not even any thought to stop it and set it up. It's going to be a, an absolute track meet all night. As it looks like we're going to get our first. Excuse me. Still waiting on a call to see who got tangled up on the inside. It may have just been it a, was jump a jump ball. ball. Yeah, it was a jump ball. Possession heading the other way. And this is going to be a storyline, Scotty, that you're kind of obsessed with as long as well as myself. Here's our first line change today. Full on line change. Five in, five out for the Somerville Green Wave. So when you look at it, it, it looks weird. But when you think about it, it works. Because these guys, I mean, you see how they're running. They're running and gunning. Guys get tired. It's the same as hockey. You, you know, in a professional hockey game, you try to get shifts less than two minutes on off on off but that's what keeps you fresh and that's exactly what david long is doing he said he's a big carolina hurricanes fan he's gonna roll with that talking about one of the brightest minds in the state when it comes to the coaching ranks david long and we should have almost built a second starting five graphics lineup for you it's Caden baskerville dj grant jojo taylor zj jenkins who's a stud and jonas nelson now on for the green wave this corner kick to Jenkins. That three off the back iron. That's DJ Grant hitting the hardwood. He comes away with a loose ball. A nice block up at the rim. How about Brian Bright, the senior kid that's averaging three blocks on the season. He gets his first of the afternoon. Yeah, Brian Bright's an interesting guy because he's a starting at Fort Dorchester guy, transferring to Ashley Ridge guy, coming back to Fort Dorchester to end his career guy. So he's seen all of Dorchester County. He's seen 642, he's seen 61. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 Brace yourself at home, folks. The replay won't do it justice. Yannick Smith with a Duncan poster that will show up on top 10 without question. Wow. Yannick Smith corner pocket three. three ball. He's got a dunk in the package. He's got a corner three as well. Yannick Smith, he's up to seven, but two of the loudest points of the high school season will show you in a few. There's his not so big little bro, Yasir Smith, with a block. It's Yannick on the run and oh. Absolute pandemonium. We've got four dunks in the first corner. That's <laughs> Yannick Smith has got the Greenway bench beside themselves. And you know what? It, I said at first Fort Dorchester got the crowd into it, but the crowd is equally Somerville, so it's not even quieting the crowd when he throws down dunks like that. We're going to take our first media timeout. I don't know if you're going to find a more excited broadcast crew than what we've seen in the first four. How about the Look inbound that. play? Yannick Smith, take us to break the poster of the season. <laughs>
It's Will Lou Gray, Opportunity School hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet. A quick 13-6 start for the Somerville Green Wave. And it's the Yannick Smith Show. How about two monster dunks to get this evening rolling? And then the three-pointer. I mean, that's the thing. You, you know, it's one thing when a guy can fly and get to the rim. It's a whole other ball game when they can shoot from the outside as well. I hate to exaggerate this early in the contest, but a kiss of Des 3 that just seemed like it reached the rafters and fell in. That's the one where Thomas McLevin's got to wink at the janitor and say, you know, we got to screw in this uh, rim a little looser. <laughs> there you go. Kaz Williams having just as an eventful start. That three brought to you by Mr. Sparky. Mr. Sparky's on-time electrician. And Kaz is up to seven. I mean, this is just a tick-for-tack, back-and-forth kind of affair between these two teams, no doubt about it. Cross-court pass to K.J. Brown was wide, but rebounded by Yasir Smith. And the nice thing is the refs are letting them play. I mean, it's not uh, every little ticky-tack foul being called. That Melvin T. Off, teal three off the front iron. But to your point, Scotty, I mean, there are athletes both on these sidelines. Yeah. Football pedigree off the range. You love to see them kind of roll. The thing is, when you are playing to this speed, you can't keep that up if you're Fort Dorchester and you only play five, six guys. Somerville's playing 12 deep. Well, on brand, the broadcaster drinks results, results into a Brian Bright and one finish. Bright does a great job keeping the ball high. Yasser Smith will be flagged with his first foul of the night. Right heads to the free throw line. Tonight's free throw is brought to you by Rapid Repairs. If your home needs repairs, call Rapid Repairs. And he misses the opportunity for three, the old fashioned way. Man, it's like we haven't even had a chance to catch our breath because we're getting another alley oop. <laughs> <laughs> Yannick Smith. KJ Brown patting his chest going up. I know you can jump, maybe not that high. Every once in a while, I just look over, I want to look at your luscious hair, Jack, and all of a sudden, I just see alley oop passes being thrown out of the gym. And, you know, I get jealous of your hair every once in a while. I got to take a look, and next thing you know, you're missing an alley oop. I was going to say, that rebound fumbled out of bounds by Mike Greer. Mikel Greer, excuse me. We see this pass. Watch the hang time. Yeah, if that pass is a little closer to the rim, that's another rim rocker. I mean, we got to be sending every one of these highlights to the you know mothership <laughs> so they can put them out on halftime of the other games that they're broadcasting. I know that fans at home probably thought we were out of our mind by our reaction. As KJ Brown misses another three from the corner. But that Yannick Smith dunk we might see later as how about Jalen Berry checking in for the first time not only tonight Scotty but on the season another football superstar who transferred from Stratford High Berry a receiver looking to play at the college level he checks in and is immediately heading to the line Thomas McElveen literally is not going to keep anything uh, toned down if you will attire wise <laughs> but he kept that one up his sleeve we talked to him before the game. We're trying to find out starters. He kept it close to his chest as Barry misses the front end. He hasn't been on the roster all season. I'm literally adding him to our roster as we <laughs> speak on my dad's iPad here. Uh, he's wearing number 22. Uh, sure, we're going to go with him as 22 because we had no idea he was even on this team. Well, athlete, but here we go. <laughs> Athlete's going to athlete. Barry misses both but corrals his own miss. Looking for another, this is Jordan Wright, the superstar sophomore. He gets his own offensive rebound. He'll be fouled, and he's heading to the line. Some more rapid repairs, free throws. And you just see David Long is so calm. We've talked about this before. He is just one of the calmer, more collected coaches, and the team follows that. You know, if a coach is going crazy, you know, there might be a little bit of a high blood pressure situation with the team, but when you have a coach who always feels like he's in control of his squad, his players play like that. We'll rave more about Coach Long and how quickly he's been able to kind of pick up where Coach Elliott left off at this prestigious Somerville program. And the nice thing for him is Greg Elliott is still in the building, so he could always turn to him for advice. Whatever he needs, he can go to Greg Elliott for them. And the coaching staff staffed with former head coaches in the area as Melvin Teal has his shot blocked by Jalen Berry. Back-to-back -back possessions where the offensive rebound will send 
The free throw shooter of the line. This time, Melvin Teal. He's got two on the night. There's some more rapid repairs, free throws. Yeah, so as we look at five players about to check in for the Somerville Green Wave, it's uh, David Long is a very interesting story, and we'll talk about him through the night, but he is not a career coach. He's a career businessman. He worked for Georgia Pacific. He's the kind of guy that just dreamed of coaching basketball, and with his wife's job situation, he was able to leave his first career and start a second career. Now he's been at Somerville for 12 years, eight as head coach of Living a Dream. Will knocks down the second from the strike. He's up to three, and the lead extended to 16-12. He'll check out as E.J. Jenkins checks in for him, but you mentioned Coach Long. Spent some time in the Wilmington area. As Barry's back out of the break. A nice pass, and how about the block? JoJo Taylor, standing at 5'11", he used all that reach for a loud, emphatic block. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where as Somerville kind of keeps the momentum going, you have to have those big defensive plays if you're Fort Dorchester to just curtail that emotion of Somerville that they're playing with and the speed that they're playing with. That's the biggest thing, is just stopping their speed. Taylor turns it over. Mikel Greer does just the same. Have to be able to capitalize on the miscues and kind of what has seemed to be a David versus Goliath matchup as we see another quick line change as some of them will opt for their starters for the last 22 seconds of play in the first quarter. Yeah, you just keep resting guys. You can't get away from that. Once you start that five in, five out, you can't get away from it. You can't stray from it because that's what got them there. And he said last year he did get away from it for a little bit and it just didn't work. Trust in his depth and with an assistant coaching staff built of Ben Snyder, Will Roberts, Mike Jenkins, it's an opportunity for some really he said, when those starters go to the bench, there's an assistant coach basically for every guy to coach up to see what they see. Yeah. Immediate adjustment. He basically has an A team coach and a B team coach, and he's the overseer. It's almost like an offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, and he's the head coach. He's Dabo. You know, Dabo is not coordinating plays for Clemson, but he's got two guys who are really good at coordinating that do the jobs. Well, let's see what that coaching staff has built in for us. Is it potentially another out of bound alley oop play? Is Yannick Smith? is guarded by Greer. He finds his little bro, Yasser Smith, for the easiest two points of the night. Lead extended to six, and half-court key won't go. To say it was an action-packed first quarter would be an understatement. Four total dunks, and Somerville, the number two team in the state, leads 18 to 12. Thunderous Kaz Williams, Yannick Smith, he laid the thunder. That first quarter don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a few. Welcome you back into Fort Dorchester High School. It's Will Lou Great, Opportunity School Hoops, driven by Cruz, Chevrolet. Scotty, we've kind of caught our breath a little bit after what was an action-packed first quarter. 
for Dorchester, kind of exchanged some blows, though, to stick around with the number two team in the state. Yeah, they weathered the storm. It's only a six-point game. Both teams are just playing with so much energy and adrenaline. If they could keep this up all the way, then I think, <laughs> for you know, if, if that's a win for Fort Dorchester if they could keep up this speed. But this is certainly going to test the uh, off-season <laughs> conditioning, if you will, for the Fort Dorchester Patriots. Man, if, if we can keep up that tempo and action pack, it's a win for Sinclair as well because we're going to have a couple top ten plays as Melvin Teal turns it over and it's Taz Williams out of the break. That's a goal ten. Williams up off the top of the glass, but you mentioned Melvin Teal slapping the ever heck out of the backboard. And they'll call that a goaltending on the floor. Taz Williams up for nine already on the night. There's no question about it. He is the leader of this team. He runs the point. He plays good defense. He's always looking ahead to that next play. How about the corner three? How about these two dudes just exchanging blows? That three-pointer brought to you by Mr. Sparky, the on-time electrician, and Yannick Smith always seems to be on time. Already he's got 14 in this one. Man, and can you imagine this team was winning games without him? That's the crazy thing. He was still playing football, and this team was already, you know, 10 wins into the season. He was still playing football for the Green Wave and Ian Rafferty. Melvin Teal puts the head down. Meet me in the A gap, it seems, as he barrels through Kyrie Bea. And call it a defensive block on Bea, his first. I'm telling you what, you got to have guts if you're going to stand in front of <laughs> Melvin Teal. I mean, he is an absolute tank. Just a big dude. He is ripped. There is not a, a gym in this county that he doesn't enjoy seeing the inside of. Melvin Teal at 6'3", 205. Inbound at the Yazir Smith. We're going to talk about a big body. Yazir Smith. Coach Long nicknamed him Fats. 6'4", 245. Nice touch off the glass. He's up to four, and Summerall's back up to seven. Yeah, Yazir Smith could not look anything less like his brother, but they are both outstanding coordinated athletes. Taz Williams, another three. The scores tonight, the superstars, they've showed up to play. But to your point about Yazir, the not-so-little big bro, Yasir Smith has done a great job of anchoring down that five spot as big bro Yannick misses his second one and it sets up the big fella as we were talking about, Yasir Smith. And the Nine. thing about Yasir Smith is he looks like the football player, but David Long thinks he's a better basketball player. He's the kind of guy who really has the coordination and he's got some height. He could really do things on the basketball court. Ashton Williams, a guy that's coming off of him. Torn ACL a season ago. He scratches onto the box score with that corner three. Here's the two man game that fans in the low country have grown to know and love. Melvin Teal, Yanni Smith. You'll see them in a lot of pick and roll situations. Kind of rare from the guard position. But that two man game, it's really been a two man night between Paz Williams and Yanni Smith. No surprise. The thing is, though, Yannick Smith is not doing this without the setup from Melvin Teal. He's getting the setup, and Melvin Teal's getting attention drawn to him, opening up Yannick Smith, and it's always nice when you've got little brother underneath to clean up your messes. Not lying. Tony McGill got underneath Yasir Smith to the display of Fort Dorchester fans. They're going to call it a defensive block. You be the judge at home. Uh, I'm not saying anything <laughs> negative about these referees because they're working with us on TV timeouts. And TV timeouts, you know what they're doing, Jack? They're paying you. I work for <laughs> no. free, but they're paying you. I don't know what you're talking about, man. I'd come do this for free. <laughs> these officials, I mean, we, we talked to them before the game. you got to mention in that first quarter how fast-paced it was. They've done a great job of letting these guys play. But when you do got just big bodies laying into each other underneath, and it's, a, it's, a, it's the kind of thing where you don't want to make it a chippy game. You don't want it to get out of hand. So you have to certainly keep control of the game, but you also want to let these guys play. Nobody in the gym comes to see 45 fouls in a night. That's just not what you're here to see. So it's, it's really kind of a delicate fine line that these refs have to walk, and they've done a really nice job so far in doing that. Yes, here's Smith. This is both of those rapid repairs, free throws. You saw Jalen Berry checking back in for Kyrie Bea. And we're going to get another. I almost feel like a little Mighty Ducks action. The flying V line change comes rolling in. I want to shout out those guys as well one more time. 
This time it's going to be Jaden Baskerville, Warren Nelson, KJ Jenkins. Actually, Big Road, Caden Baskerville checks in as well as that fade away from Barry, no good, but rebounded by McGill. There's Jalen Barry, a little wing three. I feel like I'm repeating myself on another Tony McGill offensive rebound. And the thing with Barry is you step off the football field, don't play basketball, and then jump on the team. It takes a little time to get your shot. You know, you don't just step on the basketball court and have that touch the field. You've got to build that as the season goes along. How about the trust, though, from head coach McElveen is that turnover will result into a Somerville fast break. Jaden Baskerville looking for his little bro in the corner. Here's ZJ Jenkins on a one dribble pull up. Taz Williams will crowd the defensive rebound, but that not only like, hey, let's let's throw Jalen Barry out there and maybe freak out the rivals, but the trust in letting him just pull the trigger, fire away. We've already seen him shoot the ball four times today. Because this time it's Caden Baskill going for a lay and Jalen Barry meet me at the rim. They say he got him with the body. That's his first foul. I think they looked like at first they were going to chirp each other, and I think they're buddies because they're both <laughs> <Yeah>. laughing. <laughs> I, I don't think it was as mean-spirited as you might think it was. It's, it's not like we need the uh, the Bash brothers, Fulton Reed and uh, Dean Park, whatever the guy's <laughs> name was. It's not like Gordon Bombay is sending out his, uh, his Bash brothers. Yeah, athleticism on full display, but to your point, these guys grew up right down the street together, yeah, probably played recreation department pick up basketball since they were little guys you can almost see Caden basketball right before he laid up looking back at him yep yeah no they were uh definitely had some laughs and, and they're look they're old football guys they've all seen each other these two teams they come from the same uh football like you know rec departments and everything like that they come up playing together and that's what makes the rivalry great is because everybody knows each other they're so close and oh by the way before Fort Dorchester was a school, these guys would have gone to Somerville. <laughs> Thus the reign of the legendary John McKissick. By the way, Kaz Williams, we've kind of lamented like how unbelievable of a scorer he is. Williams is a kid that's averaging five rebounds a night as well. He's a guy that is a true stat sheet stuffer. He's already up to five rebounds on the night. He's already met his pace as he misses the front end of the rapid repairs free throws. But Kaz Williams is a guy that's having 17.8 a night, four and a half rebounds, three assists, two steals. He impacts the game in so many different levels. You know what I like about him, too, is he's got height to play at the college level. He really does. He's not the kind of guard where uh, a Division I school has to go, you know what, he just doesn't have the size. You know, he needs to put on a little muscle, a little weight, but he has the height. And that right there, long arms, that's tremendous. You know, you want to be able to shoot over guys that are taller than you. Yannick Smith is guarding him. He's got an inch or two on him, but the long arms, he's got a nice build for a Division I college. Has him six foot, 165 pounds, long, lanky. Talk about college guys. Chris McIntyre, he kind of compares him to Cam Scott, a five-star up in Lexington. He's actually from here in North Charleston. They grew up together. Coach McIntyre, that high of a praise for a kid that he thinks has that same kind of level of caliber. And the telepathy, is it that the word telepathy? <laughs> telepathy? <laughs> telepathy? <laughs> telepathy? <laughs> I was going to go with the Yannick Smith, the Yassir Smith brother, telepathy. <laughs> Te te telepathy? Telepathy. Te no! Telepathy? I'll, I'll get my thesaurus <laughs> at halftime. It was a really nice look. Yasir Smith pushed the lead back up 27. What I was saying, Jack, is he saw the guy down low very well, and they happen to be brothers, so maybe they've got a little thing going. <laughs> a connection is strong. We'll use this connection to take a break and head to break. 3.48 to go in the second. Summer of the Leeds, 27-42.
It's Will Lou Gray Opportunity School Hoops driven by Crew Chevrolet. The number two team in the state of South Carolina, the Somerville Green Wave led by David Long. Off to an eventful start, but Fort Dorchester, Thomas McElveen's team, they're not going anywhere, putting up quite the fight in this first half. We've been able to calm down over here in the booth after what seemed like an absolute NASCAR first quarter. Telepathic yeah. telepathy. I feel good about it, All do right. you? Yeah, I, no, I'm going to believe you, absolutely. No <laughs> question about it. You are far smarter than I. I appreciate the <laughs> kind words. We only dream to be as smart as these two head coaches who've got their two squads firing on all cylinders for our first Will Lugray Opportunity School contest of the season. Warren and, Nelson in line, this is that front end. And talk about telepathy on the bench. Thomas McElveen looks to his left and there is his son, Jordan McElveen, and he puts a lot on his son's shoulders. And it's nice though, because he gets to see his son grow as a coach. He came right out of college at Catawba, came right here and started coaching for dad, learning from dad, but he gets to understand how his son ticks and son gets to see how dad does this and he's been coaching for a long time. Jordan McElveen had a really successful career at Catawba College. The stud in the low country at Goose Creek High School is what a play by our cameraman. That's Tim Fennell. Tim Fennell kick save and a beauty catches that hoop in between the legs. That may have been more impressive than the dunk. I think that was more a defensive catch right there, <laughs> if you will. Well, I gotta tell you, if he doesn't make the catch, it's gonna be a bad day. And he kept the kept the shot in focus. That's the amazing thing. The shot is perfectly in focus. It might be night one. We're knocking the rust off, but these guys with us, they're the best in the business. That ball trickles out of bounds. Possession will remain with a green wave. Yeah, I was very impressed that he kept that in frame. He kept it in focus. Talk about a dude that stays locked in and focused. Perfect pass from Melvin Thiel to Yannick Smith. Yannick Smith is making this look easy. He's got 16 in the first half. He's about as good as Tim Fennell, our camera guy. Yeah, you know, the nice thing about what David Long does, he's so calm, but he's also so meticulous all of these inbound plays these are not things that are just being drawn up in the sand he just caught another one he just caught another one guys oh. look he's locked in he's pleading for some minutes our head official he's like yeah let's check him in let's go now <laughs> sorry to digress continue with David. i was just saying that you know, these are not drawn up in the sand these are meticulously practiced inbound plays talk about good coaching you said that assistant coaching staff is Tough look at the room as Warren Nelson will come down with the board. He's got two former head coaches in the low country on his staff. Yeah, Michael Jenkins is a Somerville grad. He was a longtime head coach at Stratford. And then Ben Snyder, who's sitting right next to him there, former head coach at West Ashley. But he was a longtime coach in North Carolina. And he's from Indiana, where I believe his dad is a longtime head coach. Those points in the plate brought to you by West Shore Home, America's most admired home remodeling brand by Mauritius Dawson. His first two from the sophomore, but to your point, too, even Will Roberts, he's a protege of Ben Snyder during his time at West Ashley. David Long said he's like, man, I, such a selfless head coach, and most are as Yannick Smith dives in. And look at Yasir Smith cleaning up the glass as well. Yasir's up to 10, already passed. What he averages a night. This series averaging seven and six. He's already got ten and five. Yeah, he's just cleaning up the dirt, and then he's also finding that option to be a third option because everyone knows that Teal and Yannick are kind of running the show up top, but you, you never want to come off the guy that's down low under the basket. We can see Jalen Berry kind of like playing the rim instead of playing the man. You look to see him box out. That'll come obviously with time as he kind of gets his bearings on the hardwood figured out. Checking in for Fort Dorchester is Jordan Wright, Nash and Williams. That lead up to seven for Somerville. Hasn't gone past seven quite yet. McElveen's group been able to keep it close. He throws in arguably two of his better scorers alongside Williams, looking for some instant offense. Yeah, you just don't want to get this thing to double digits if you're Fort Dorchester. You don't want to let it get to 36, 26 before the half. If you can keep this in single digits going into the half, then you've got a nice upbeat halftime speech, and then it's one run. You're one quick run away from it. That is a big lead move from Yannick Smith. He gets that right shoulder, the hesitation, the step back. He's long, but he was fouled, didn't have anywhere to land. 
the thing about Yannick Smith is that it's not like he's just a great athlete. He's a great athlete with an unbelievable work ethic. And that's what David Long, that's what Ian Rafferty, they all love about him is he's always wanting to work. He wants to play the next sport. He wants to learn the next thing. That's what college coaches love. He'll be great for Mike Houston in East Carolina because he just wants to get better. He went to the Shrine Bowl. He excelled at the Shrine Bowl. He was outstanding up there. But that's another week of work on his body. But he's gotten his body into such good shape that it doesn't matter he's just kind of ready to weather the storm and a good kid comes from a good family he's averaging 19 a night and a casual basketball fan will go out there he's the offensive guru but what's long he told us man, he's our do-it-all guy he's so coachable he's obviously always looking to learn and get better but he's a guy that's having 30 assists and four boards this night as well he serves at the top of the press and you can see he's his biggest cheerleader as the second five is out jojo taylor misses that layup Fort Worcester kind of keep that deficit at bay. Half court. It's just Dawson is going to be fouled. I think they're going to get it on ZJ Jenkins, his first. Yeah, that's not a foul you want to commit there in the backcourt. It wasn't like they were, uh, you know, on a fast break and, and really going to easily score. So a ticky-tack foul, not a big deal, though. I mean, it's only their third foul of the half. Foul trouble has not been an issue in this game. Credit that partially to the refs for letting them play, but also because it's two well-coached teams. I misspoke. They actually got it on JoJo Taylor. They just got JoJo Taylor again. Two quick ones. But again, to no avail. David Long, calm, cool, collected, unfazed by the moment. Make a mistake? Great. But he will be their biggest cheerleader in times of success. What a cool story about David Long when he started coaching. Starts up at Laney High School in Wilmington, North Carolina. You might know one of their alums. And oh, by the way, that alum, his name is Michael. His last name is Jordan. But don't worry, Coach Long wasn't the one that cut him and kept him on JV. That is very true. <laughs> yeah. The cool thing is that he said, Christmas is nice, but first day of practice is even better when that box arrives from Mr. Jordan <laughs> with a full load of clothes and sneakers and socks and whatever else might come from the Jumpman company. The most decorated. High school program in the country. Best shoot game without question. Wow. It better be. <laughs> right? Dawson knocks down the second. Deficit back to seven. Fort Worcester in the full court press. A great pass from Teal. How about the drop off? Clinical offensive set. Make it a hockey assist. Teal to Yannick to Nelson. The two of the prettiest West Shore home points in the game of the night. Fort Dorchester back on the press, and it's K.J. Brown picking the pocket, and they're back out on the go. Brown finds Nelson and Fort sitting back in the zone. How about another pretty dump off? And Yazir Smith's up to 12. And this is exactly what I said you don't want to allow happen if you're Fort Dorchester. But the thing is, I'm a little surprised that no timeouts have been called. I would have maybe tried to settle it down a little bit right here before the half because that momentum going into the half is so important. Or hold for the last shot. They refuse to do not. Teal, big bully. He's dominating on the boards. He gets his own miss. Goes back up again. How about three offensive rebounds until Melvin Teal finishes? Too yeah, good, just... too strong. It would have been too good for our highlights if we got a half quarter <laughs> to go in. We'd be done for the night. Somerville goes on a 7-0 run to push the lead to 13. A first half, we set it action packed. We've got some dunk reels to send you home. Don't go anywhere. Our halftime reports on the other side of this break.
Welcome to the Doctors Implants Halftime Report, empowering people through full mouth dental implants. Welcome back, Talking High School Hoops and our scholar athletes this year, as always, presented by the Thumbs Up guys. Brandon Dawson joining us now. Uh, you did it for football, now you do it for basketball. Why is it that you're back again? Yeah, you know, we're back for 2024 High School Hoops. We love giving back to these kids. We had such a great time uh, looking at all the athletes uh, from Friday Night Rivals in the fall. Uh, so many amazing athletes, scholar athletes. Um, so we said, why not do it again in 2024? It is really cool when you see it at the end in the check presentation and they get to go and use that money towards college. I guess it's going to kind of give you that good feeling inside. Exactly, man. You know, we know it's going to be difficult to pick another kid this year. Um, it was so difficult in the fall. And so, again, we're just honored to be able to, to give back to, the, to these amazing scholar athletes. Finally, what's the firm up to these days in 2024? Uh, we're growing like crazy. Uh, we've got some big goals this year. We want to positively impact over 10,000 people here in the Charleston community. Um, so we're looking to give back. We're looking to continue to grow uh, and give back to this amazing in Charleston community. Thumbs up to that. The Thumbs Up Guys presenting sponsors of our Scholar Athlete. Each week, the Thumbs Up Guys are proud to highlight a Scholar Athlete from each participating school. The student selected will have an opportunity to win a $2,500 scholarship at the end of the season. Tonight's Scholar Athletes are first from the Somerville Green Wave, it's the superstar soccer player, Logan Kelly, boasting a 5.368 GPA. Logan looking to pursue a little bit of college interest on the soccer pitch, but with that GPA, she'll be able to attend any classroom in the country. For Fort Dorchester, it's London Camille Alford. London, a member of the Fort Dorchester varsity basketball team for the last three years, as well as the varsity track and field team, but a 4598 GPA. She's also been awarded the Heart of the Patriot Award and was a member of that track and field state championship at the 5A level back in 2023. She was also a member of the varsity volleyball team, a three sport athlete. Congratulations to you, London Alford, and to Logan Kelly as well, this week's Scholar Athletes. All right, welcome back. We are joined now by Taryn Floyd, the athletics director here at Fort Dorchester High School. First, I guess we have to catch our breath after that first half. Holy smokes. That was very exciting. You enjoyed that, huh? I did. Uh, as far as what's going on here at Fort, I know a lot of exciting things. Number one being a new head football coach. If we could talk a little bit about that, I guess that's what a lot of people want to hear about. Yep, Coach Lowe's actually in the stands tonight. I believe he's over in the uh, corner right now talking to some of the players. He came uh, down to see the team play tonight and we're very excited to see him and he's here full-time now he's here from Florida oh he's here so we have a new head football coach Thomas McElveen not a new head basketball coach but he's a guy that's been here for a while what kind of job does he do with these kids I mean you just can't get much better than coach Mac he kind of is my go-to he does everything I need uh, the kids love him he's there for him day and night so we just couldn't ask for much better from him. How big of a night is a night like tonight, just gate-wise, when you see this kind of a crowd? I'm sure it helps the athletics department tremendously. We looked forward to it. The moment we woke up, you could kind of just feel the buzz in the air. We were very excited. We knew it was going to be a big night. A lot of people came out. A lot of our alumni are here. I'm just seeing some across the court right now. Um, so we just knew it was going to be a fun night. Final question for you. What's going on at the school? Anything big going on right now as we come back from Christmas break and start a new year? What's kind of the big things happening here at the fort? 
I mean, right now we're gearing up. We're, you know, wrestling's having a big season. We're gearing up for our spring season. They just started their conditioning yesterday, and just everything at the fort's always fun. Awesome. Sounds good. That's Taryn Floyd. She is the athletic director here at Fort Dorchester High School, getting ready for second half action. Welcome to the Doctors Implants Halftime Report, empowering people through full mouth dental implants. Our free throw sponsor here on High School Hoops, Rapid Repairs. Joining us now, Brian Miller from Rapid Repairs. First, welcome in. Why uh, High School Hoops? Why jump into this high school sports realm for you? Well, thanks, Scotty, for having me on the on the show. I uh, love high school sports as a product of Charleston County School District. It makes me extremely happy to know that high school sports is really foundational for the kids here in the Low Country for personal development and also helps them build a lot of team camaraderie as they uh, grow into the community. Rapid repairs. What are you guys up to? What could folks call you for? Rapid Repairs, we're a home repair company, so we like to tell the community if your home needs repairs, call Rapid Repairs. So. We really like to focus on home safety with, with all your mechanical systems, whether it's electrical, plumbing, or just general home maintenance work. Final question for you, Rapid Repairs. How long have you guys been at it and how much pride is there representing uh, that company? Yeah, great question. So this year marks 25 years uh, serving the low country. Our pride is really the, the company is our, our heart and soul. It's a uh, local company. My wife and I uh, are the owners of it. If any of you've watched our commercials, our children are growing up around the business and we like to give back to the community. We try to involve the trades here in the local community as well as in the school. Awesome. Thanks so much. That's Brian Miller from Rapid Repairs as they present our free throw shooting here on High School Hoops.
The Will Lou Gray Opportunity School Hoops, driven by Crew Chevrolet. A 13 point lead coming out of half. Sky, what stood out to you other than dunk, 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 dunk and dunk? Yeah, there's <laughs> Cass Williams. 13 points for him in the first half. He's living up to the billing, and then Somerville just running and gunning. And look at Yannick Smith. The dunks from him, the three point shooting. 18 for Yannick Smith, five for Melvin Teal, and Yazir Smith. 12 points, so the Smith brothers with 30 of Somerville's 40 points here tonight. Yes and yes, why and why? Yaz here and Yannick, what, 18 for Yannick in that first half, paired with three assists as well. See the backdoor cut to Yaz here on a beautiful pass from Melvin Teal. Both Dorchester hung around, traded some shots. But this, the... this five minute stretch now is crucial for Fort Dorchester because the difference between, you know, nine points and 20 points is massive in a game like this. Feels insurmountable. Shot blocked by Warren Nelson. Field finds Yannick in the corner, and you're starting to see these rebounding efforts from Somerville start to take over. Nelson misses in the corner, and a nice rebound by Brian Bright. And you don't worry about if you have a miss for Nelson because he's going to keep going. That's the key to a good shooter. Keep shooting, keep shooting. You have to have a short memory. Doesn't matter if you go in a low. Well, how about a coast to coast? There's no low in five game. Melvin Teal up to seven. He's maybe potentially eyeing a triple double. Seven, five, and five at the half. Yeah, good comparison. I was talking to Rain Smith the other day at the College of Charleston. And he started out the year, he couldn't hit anything but it never stopped him from shooting. And now here he is going for 20 a game and leading him on this six game win streak that they're on. Wait, number five. How about that? Full court pass on a dime. Yannick Smith, tough finish. He's at 20. Good finish, better five from Teal. I see, uh, this is the second time in the game where if I'm Thomas McElveen, I'm calling timeout right there. You've got to stop any runs. You've got timeouts to call. I don't think this is going to be a game that comes down to, you know, ticky-tack timeouts and fouls at the end of it. Nice take, as Williams, that finger roll, so pretty. But to your point, Scotty, Fort Gorch is a team that likes to run. They like right. to push the pace. But you can't ratchet match racers with Somerville. You play this kind of pace, they'll bury you. KJ Brown looking to bury his first three. Looking to scratch the scoring efforts is Brown. KJ, a guy that averages 10 points tonight. He's a, quite the sharpshooter from downtown. See that full court pass from Teal to Yannick. It's the second full court pass. Kevin Love asking. There's that finger roll from Cass Williams. I guess we give that a thumbs up from the thumbs up guys. Miller, Dawson, Siegel, and Ward. Looks like Thomas McElman's going to take your advice, use that timeout to get his sophomore Jordan Wright in the game. Yeah, 15-point deficit right now. We're only two minutes into the second half. It's kind of ballooning a little bit. This is that time. Let's just get it under control. Let's keep it a game. Because when it's a game in the fourth quarter, you've got the home court. You've got weapons. You certainly can get it to Taz. But if it's a 20 points, there's very little you can do. It's only an eight-point quarter here in high school. Eight minute quarter, I should say. Wise timeout. Still two minutes away from that media timeout. Using that to get his sophomore in the game, Jordan Wright. A guy that started a lot of games last year, was pulled up from JV, he was a freshman playing varsity. They expect big things from Wright. A deflection from Williams. This is Tony McGill out on the run. How about the hang time? Tough finish at the rim. Tony McGill's up to six. That's going to be one of the tougher finishes. Up above the rim, we're going to see all night. We've seen some crazy ones. Tony McGill is a point guard who's never played point guard before this. He was an off-ball guy. Now he's comfortable playing point guard, keeping the ball in his hands. He's a big, uh, strong, physical guy. He played football this year. Thomas McElveen didn't think it was a great idea, but you know what? He looks pretty good here, so I'm not going to doubt it. He was a dude that was on that state championship team two years ago. He watched, he learned. Now it's his time to take over. Some of them in a full court press. Fort Dorchester pushes. Really beautiful drawn up play as Brian Bright catches that half court and hands off to the ever talented Kaz Williams. He's got two of the strike waiting for him. Tony McGill, not related to Nick McGill, the other McGill who is a heck of a player here at Fort Dorchester, who's now doing some really good things for the Citadel downtown. I know it was a rough year for the Bulldogs, but he had a really good freshman year down there. 
And it's fun when you see guys that are playing at this level and then go to that next level and their coaches love to see it, uh, how, how well these schools prepare them. That's, it's, I guess it's rewarding for us because we've seen them grow through the ranks in the high school level. We were just talking to Matt Lynch, who's the head coach at USC Salkahatchee, and he's got uh, Jay Chisholm from Somerville, and he says, doing fantastic, starting, playing, we love him, he's a great learner. All the things that you want to hear if you're a coach, and so it kind of makes us proud that we've seen these guys grow on high school hoops, and now they're doing things at that next level. It's the same thing we're broadcasting that. Our friends at Real Israel Opportunity School that's got a year of the storyteller that paints it so beautifully as that pass leads Yannick Smith out of bounds. Rare to see a sight like that. But think about all the kids, how inspiring it is to see a Jay Chisholm go off, be able to earn a degree at USC Salt, chase that dream. Yeah. A lot of kids in the building tonight that want to be a Yannick Smith, the Cavs, Williams, and Melvin Deal. It's amazing just to see some of the people that we've Nah, we're, we haven't put them on that path, but maybe we've helped a little bit. A guy like Leo Albano, he was playing in one of our first games that we broadcast. He was our scholar athlete, played for Notre Dame, and now he's coaching at Bishop England. He's back where it all started. So it is fun to kind of see the full circle 360 with some of these guys a couple of years later. No country ties strong, just like this Somerville backcourt. How about the head fake? Brando, Yannick Smith. Make it 23, and there's a lot of ball game left to play. That three brought to you by Mr. Sparky. And we saw him get hot at the round ball classic, and when he gets hot, he gets hot. And, and just feed him the ball and let him go. That game at the uh, round ball, he had four straight three-pointers, and it was just give the ball to Yannick and get out of the way. <laughs> Kicking and screaming, give the ball to the Italians and roll. Yannick Smith, and he's a takeover kind of guy. Every shot's a good shot. But so impressive about three's game. Never settles. Right. Everything is wide open. Ashton Williams is going to head to the free throw line for the first time tonight. Warren Nelson's hit with his second foul of the evening. When you look at these players on Fort Dorchester, the ones that have played football, they're really, they've got that football look. They're really in shape. Their conditioning program here has always been really, really good. And, and now they've got better facilities and they've got more toys to play with in the gym and everything like that. I mean, these are both schools, I should say. I mean, Fort Somerville's gym is stunning over at the high school. Uh, these schools are getting their guys ready for the next level. They, they come out of these schools and they are ready athletically, academically, to play and to learn at the next level. The kick to the corner, KJ Brown still looking for his first three. There's Warren Nelson fighting for a rebound. Takes it down and finds Smith. Brown, wing, no good off the front rim. It's been a little bit of a difficult shooting night for KJ Brown, but don't let that distract you from what he was able to pull off against the number one team in the state earlier this week against Lexington. How about six threes on the night, five in a row in the second quarter? Yep. It was an absolute three point frenzy for KJ Brown, and look at the backside effort from Yannick Smith. 12 point lead, 23 points on the night, yet he's the first on the hardwood. Warren Nelson, when you score, uh, not Warren Nelson, I should say, uh, KJ Brown, when you, when you have 17 points in the first half against the number one team, that's got to help your confidence knowing that you can do it. So even if you get into a bit of a lull, you know that you can do it. Ooh, how about the tip in Jalen Barry? His first field goal as a Patriot cuts the lead back to 10. Crowd really into it. I mean, you're, you've are you got people kind of lined up to the doors and the corners. I mean, people want to see this matchup, and they're getting what they asked for. You got a 10-point game with 11 minutes left in it. It's still a ball game. You got the starters in. This is what you come for on a Friday night in the low country. Is smart time out there by Melvin Teal. He saw there was nowhere to go. The only thing that was going to happen was a travel. Well, you can tell how about Thomas McElveen's group in a little bit of a zone, putting some pressure on. Can they get back in it? It's a 10 point deficit with 320 to go.
Ildu Gray Opportunity School Hoops, driven by Crew Chevrolet on Rivers, just north of Northwest Mall. You've got a friend at Crew Chevy. David Long, he's made quite a bit of friends up at Somerville High School, taking over for Greg Elliott. The Green Wave has picked up right where they've left off. The Yannick Smith show tonight has been quite the treat. He's already got 23. We still got a whole quarter left to play. Love getting the text updates. Just got one from the other side of town here. Pinewood Prep goes down to First Baptist. Tay Robinson with a buzzer feeder to win the game for First Baptist over Pinewood. Really good win for Anton Saunders and the Hurricanes across town here in Flower Town. We'll highlight that at the end of the game, but we've got First Baptist against Porter Gow. That's going to be, again, another huge rivalry game. Every year it seems like that matchup besides the region championship. But Tay Robinson's a dude whose game has exploded yeah. from last year's campaign. And it certainly helps when you've got a guy next to you who's getting high D1 offers because Kowalski, Cooper Kowalski, takes so he takes a double team and it opens somebody up on the floor. Jalen Berry hits the floor after causing the turnover on the other end. He'll head to the free throw line for the second time tonight. The ace up his sleeve for Thomas McElveen has provided the impact yeah. I think he was looking for. Uh, Thomas McElveen, he's always got something. He's always <laughs> yeah. got something working, something formulating. Always got a good combo. I think he's got what is that, the white pants, red jacket tonight. He said it was going to be a surprise. He's got a yellow suit, a white suit, a blue suit, a red suit. I said, you're not going to wear the yellow one because that's Somerville's color. <laughs> so you have to surprise us. And, and, and the red shoes, I think, are what bring it home. Barry knocks down the second. He's two for four from the free throw line. But Thomas McElveen has definitely been noticed. Melvin Teal is actually going to get hit with a carry. Well, all, all of a sudden, that Fort Dorchester defense intensifies. Yeah. And you want to talk about an outfit that's intense. It's very 2003 NBA draft class. Look, yeah. McElveen's such an interesting story. He's from North Charleston. He went to Stahl High School, was a standout football player at Stahl. He was actually recruited by the legendary Eddie Robinson at Grambling. I, I love that story. He was offered in his, in his final recruiting class. He ended up not taking it, staying home, started a family, and here he is coaching basketball, which was his third favorite sport growing up behind football and baseball. Barry misses the corner three. How about the cross-court pass? ZJ Jenkins in the corner long. Cass Williams looking to get it rolling. Bodies hitting the floor. And how about Greer on the fast break? Hey, Jack, we got a ball game now. Fort Norchester can feel it. Two huge points in the paint brought to you by West Shore Home. And the offense is being driven by the defense. Fort cut it back to seven. David Longo not panicking. Didn't even stand up there. Didn't even <laughs> stand. Just sat on the bench. He's not panicking. He's got a lot of faith in his team. But this is going to be scary. If that's, well, that could have been a goal ten the way he did that. <laughs> Saw a really similar play in the first half. Which was called a goal ten. Now it's Teal on the other end. Too big, too strong. He's fouled by Greer. I'm really impressed with Jalen Berry. How basketball savvy he is for a guy who hasn't really played basketball and he's a great athlete we knew that but he's also super basketball savvy just kind of knowing situations and you know I, I know he's played in the past but still to jump into the varsity level against the number two team in the state's not easy first game coming out of the holidays and you're right his impact on both ends of the floor and he spoke volumes we saw that replay brought to you by the thumbs up guys with personal injury attorneys at Miller, Dawson, Siegel, and Ward, winning cases and your trust. It's a winning play. You always talk about winning those 50 50 balls yeah. on the ground. Uh, you know, Fort Dorchester, they're the kind of team that they're always looking for the 50 50 balls, even in their little uh, pregame ritual. The first time I saw them, they were doing the dive on the court. Maybe they got a little rug burn so they stopped the dive, but they're still going down to the floor. They know those, those balls on the floor, they want to get them. We got a ball game. Kaz Williams, he's got another three. That's his third Mr. Sparky three-point of the night. He's got 18. Somerville being tested. There's that zone. Back past half court, and that Fort Dorchester bench has erupted. There's the play, Kaz Williams knocking down that three. Just a really smooth shot from him. 
he is living up to the billing that Thomas McElveen told us on the phone this week. He said, this guy is really good, and now he's battle-tested. You know, he, earlier he wasn't battle-tested. I think we're about to see a rim rocker. Battle-tested, <laughs> that rim's been tested. But hold your horses. Did he call travel? Yannick's letting us know it's a travel behind the play. They said KJ Brown took an extra step before oh. Yannick Smith almost brought the rim down for the third time tonight. Oh. Lead stays at five. I, you know, that's why I'm not a referee, because I was looking at one thing, the dunk, <laughs> and I was not looking at anything else well, leading yeah. up to it. Well, little bro Yasir Smith said, you need some fireworks, how about a block on the other end? Jalen Berry with a step back, a little give and go, won't be found. Tell you what, Fort Dorchester's really impressed me this third quarter. Oh, tough finish at the rim. Great find by Mikel Greer. Fort Dorchester's got it to three. You got to realize that two years ago, they were in a state title. Last year, they were the bottom of the conference. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Warren Nelson, you want to talk about absolute bodies right yeah. now. Jalen Berry went and met him at the rim. They said they caught him underneath. Everything is just ratcheted up in these last four minutes. We got a three-point game. Both teams know it. Thomas McElvey, he is pumping his team up. David Long, the exact opposite on the Somerville sideline. <laughs> but that's their style. That's what makes contrasting styles great. The student section. Fort Dorchester High School. They're kind of taking on the embodiment. The man in the suave red blazer. Thomas McElwain's getting this place on its feet. How could they not? Been a nine-point advantageous Fort Dorchester third quarter. That first free throw knocked down by Warren Nelson, brought to you by Rapid Repairs. Your home needs repairs. Call Rapid Repairs. Do you need an offense or rebound? Call David Long's group. Yeah. I don't have the number in front of me, but ZJ Jenkins' efforts on the offensive glass will send him to the line. Yeah, they really do crash the boards. They're never giving up on a play. They're just constantly going, going, going. And that was Kaz Williams on the foul. He's not a guy that you want to get into foul trouble, although that, I think that's only two fouls. So not nobody's really in foul trouble at all. I mean, we've only got seven fouls total between the two teams in the second half here. So foul trouble doesn't seem to be playing into it. But with this type of a game, you might have to get those numbers up to get guys to the line at the end of it. 51-45 now, six-point game. Fort Dorchester's got this possession, but that's a big steal. We're going Fort Dorchester tonight. Yeah, like just 20 seconds left, and you can see Fort Dorchester trying to really push the envelope. Melvin Teal standing strong, picks the pocket, slows down the pace with 18 seconds. They're going to sub in JoJo Taylor for Melvin Teal, maybe to keep him out of foul trouble. Sure. They're putting the ball in the, ha <laughs> put the, ball in the hands of Kaz Williams. Williams dumps off to right. But Jalen Berry, corner three, no good. Fort Dorchester, an offensive rebound of Arrow. Kaz Williams won't get it to go. But Jalen Berry, the story of the night, maybe, for Fort Dorchester. Yeah. An offensive rebound, I believe that's the fifth foul of the quarter on Somerville. That puts them in the bonus and will send Berry to the line. Yeah, the over the top right there, over the back for Somerville was, was no question about it, but that's because Barry got himself in that position. He, you know, he was in perfect position to grab that rebound, whatever he needs to do, the dirty work. You know, his shot has not fallen a whole lot tonight. And that's to be expected, but he's always in the right position. He's playing good defense, he's rebounding, he's chirping, he's doing everything that you want a guy, an agitator, if you will, to do. That's the kind of guy that you need on your team. Just a tough dude who's not going to back down to anything. Knocks down the second. That speaks to the basketball IQ, the positional awareness. And the clock's dwindling down. How about Melvin Teal from half court? We told you he's a strong dude. That flies over the backboard. But Fort Dorchester, they cut it to five. Kaz Williams has herself tonight. Right on the back of his 18 points. Eight minutes to go. Can Fort Dorchester in a rivalry matchup uproot the number two team in the state? Stay tuned.
Welcome back into Will Lee Gray Opportunity School Hoops, driven by Crew Chevrolet. Take a look in. Thomas McElveen's got to be ecstatic at his team's third quarter efforts. Eight to go, down five. The number two team in the state in your building. A rivalry that goes back decades. Can they pull off the upset? That's a great start. Barry running the floor for the first time what seems tonight. Opts to slow it down. Scratch that. Tony McGill fires away. McGill foul Yannick Smith. Yannick was looking to push it into transition. 7.35 to go, Scotty. In order for Fort McElveen's group to pull off this upset, what do you think they got to continue to do here in the second half? I think you got to continue to hold down Melvin Teal. He hasn't scored a ton tonight. If he gets hot, then it's a totally different ball game. Now, he's running the point and distributing and everything like that, but he hasn't scored a ton. As I say that, he's going to go in there right now, but he didn't score. I think you've got to stop him. If you can stop him, like, like they've long said, he's the wheel that it all goes behind with Summer. Tough finish at the rim. And here's Teal on the transition. Does he have a big one? Flush City, he made it look like slight work. Yeah. Up to 10 is Melvin Teal. Scotty called, he answered. Yeah, no doubt about it. He's the guy that just powers the offense. And there's so many details that they're always taking care of. I'll tell you what, it goes right down to the jerseys that they wear. I thought this was super cool. I just happened to see it when I was seeing guy right in front of the table. The Somerville jerseys on the back, they still have an emblem to represent the Charleston Nine firefighters, which Lewis Mulkey was one of one of the coaches of Somerville. He hasn't been forgotten 17 years later. It's just those little attention to detail that I really appreciate. Offensive class. Christian Brown absolutely battling his tail off, but another turnover. Turnovers on both sides. Cal with Taz Williams in the chest. Once, twice, how about thrice? Deficit back to five. Cavs Williams with two offensive rebounds. He's got 22. He's averaging 18 a night. The Stars, they've shown up to play. And you know what? They're not huffing and puffing. You know, you can always tell if the hands are on the knees. If the hands are on the knees, they're, they're tired. They're sucking wind, but they're not. They're getting substitutions. They're getting quick substitution just to get in, get out, get a breath, get some water, get back in. So the Stars are, you know, going to be in the game, but they are pretty well conditioned. It was Warren Nelson checking in for Caden Baskerville. And I misspoke earlier in the game. I got to make sure I get this kid as far as Ashton Washington checking back in from Fort Dorchester. Washington's been so crucial to this Patriot ball club. He tore his ACL a year ago, getting him back this year. Coach McElvey said was so valuable. He brings so much effort. He's averaging five and four a night, but it's his leadership in the locker room that really makes a huge impact. McGill on the rebound, kicks it out to Greer. Greer up against the rim. Can't get it to go, but he's going to be fouled underneath by K.J. Brown. Man, just the intensity every time they're running down the court. There is no thought to stopping and setting it up. It's let's go for the break, let's get points quickly, and let's keep running. <laughs> we joked earlier in the game about all the dunks, the rim rock. How about some of the potential block shots tonight? I feel yeah. like Melvin Teal and Yannick Smith are going to tear down the backboard as on cue. Kill Grayer. With that being said, you do have to worry though. You gotta watch yourself for goaltends. You don't want to get called for a goaltend on a ball that might not go in. You don't want to go there and try to, you know, block it when it doesn't need to be blocked and get your hand on the back order. Get it when it's in the cylinder. You don't want to get a goaltend that you don't need. Well, we saw Teal getting yeah. flagged with that goaltend, and as this game is turning into a barn burner, every possession will count. We got a little pause in the action as our officiating crew, I think, is having a conversation about the scoreboard. That deficit's still at full. I don't see anything miscued on our end. I'm curious if they're potentially talking about a goaltend if they issued it and it was an and one situation. Sure. 
And also, obviously, this is South Carolina. We do not have a shot clock, so they don't have to worry about a shot clock. There is no instant replay. We've got instant replay that we can watch, but they can't see our instant replay. There is no shot clock to take a you know, look at. So really what you have to look at would be something on the score, something on the shot clock, something on the game clock. And I do think I know what they're talking about now. They actually charged that foul on Yannick Smith. That's a huge development in the sense that it's Yannick's second. Never know what might happen down the road. I thought it was on KJ Brown. I believe they did as well. They were both up there. It was a pick one, yeah. you know. <laughs> Flip a coin. Fort Dorchester laying back in the zone. Melvin Teal looking to dissect. Defended by Barry, but the rebound by Teal and the and one finish. Huge, huge play for Teal right there. For Dorchester, one thing, they haven't hit a ton of free throws tonight. Their free throw shooting percentage is a bit low. That one they just missed. Those are free points. You can't give those away in a game like this where every point matters. You just can't give away those freebies. Now, Somerville, if they could take advantage, it's almost like an extra one. But that being said, he missed it for Dorchester. Oh. Whoa. Chestnut checkers. They have Greer sitting in the back end, hiding as Somerville was aggressively trying to take the offensive glass. A three-point swing as Teal's unable to knock down the free throw. Yeah, cherry picking like that, not allowed in soccer, not allowed in <laughs> yeah. hockey and basketball. You can do it all you want. Not allowed if the free open gym runs, though, I'll tell you that <laughs> much. As look at the step through. Those ones where you school Chuck Itson? <laughs> yeah, uh, not so much. Jalen Barry out in transition. He's looking for Greer in the corner. He steps through a Euro that falls short. KJ Brown rebounds. Somerville back out in transition. Yannick, Yannick was trying to get his attention. You know he wanted to make the run for an alley-oop, but he was smart. He stepped out to the three-point line, didn't get the shot to go. But the two of them play so well in the backcourt together. And you know what? They're the two biggest guys out there, except for Yazir Smith. The two of them, that's a huge advantage if you have big guys that play in the backcourt. They just, they're, they're bigger than their opponents in the backcourt. So physical, so fast, and yep. you see them at the top of the press. Can you, I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. Got anybody that reminds you of how dominant? How about this move? The dominance of Ashton Washington. He's got seven and the acrobatic finish. That turnover there for Somerville. They just weren't looking. Warren Nelson didn't turn around, know the ball was coming at him. Let's take another look. This is the Greer cherry picked layup. But how about Ashton Washington? Yeah. Here? Good tough play right there to make it a two point game with four minutes to play. He was a big piece on the state championship two years ago. He missed all of last year with a knee injury. He's instant energy. They get the stop on the other end. He's firing up the student section. He's a culture guy. Jack, you played on a state championship team. How important are those culture guys to a state championship run? Well, as you see Ashton Washington taking another look at the rim. To me, they, they exuberate in a way that, like, they don't have to impact the game in scoring, but charges and leadership. And this is why he's got Fort Dorchester down too. 342 to go. Don't go anywhere.
It's Will Lou Gray, Opportunity School Hoops, driven by Crew Chevrolet. The rivalry, it's lived up to the height. It was a 13-point lead at the half. But Kaz Williams and company, they cut it to two with just three and a half to go. Yeah, this is what you want at the end of a game. And you know what? These teams don't often get the TV timeout. They don't know how to handle it, but it's like almost like a gift given to them. They could draw things up that they normally wouldn't draw up at that time. It's it's almost like, all right, this is a gift to the coaches. Draw up your best stuff. If we got four minutes left, you just got a free timeout. Let's see what you got. CJ Jenkins picks the pocket. It's him and McGill in transition. The beautiful up and under to push the lead back out to four. Not the inbound play Fort was hoping for. Nope, yeah, when you draw it up, you don't want to draw it up. Uh, <laughs> throwing the ball to the other team by, by any stretch of the means. Washington with a great pass, and how about the backside defense? To swipe it from Yannick Smith will give you another look at that beautiful ZJ Jenkins finish. Yeah, 6'4", good body for basketball, good speed, kind of took the burst there at the end, got in for the reverse lane. He had an open guy that he could have looked at, but he knew that if he went to the reverse, he could get it himself, and he did. Jenkins in that second unit, averaging 7, 5, and 3. Coach Long said he's got a super high ceiling. Sport Borchester gets the turnover they're looking for. Has Williams just a little too strong. That's a rare miss with that much space. As you're going to see the Shrine Bowl selection, the superstar Yannick Smith calm things down. It's funny, if we get to a timeout situation, Greg Elliott, the former head coach, says, watch out for the alley-oop out of the timeout. It's our old Hawkeye play we ran for Shaq Davis. So what? watch out for that if they come out of a timeout. How about that setup? Yannick to Yasir to Warren Peanut Nelson. Peanuts got eight, and that's a huge three to push the lead to seven. He really is old reliable. That's what you want in the shooter. Just You want guys to forget about you, and then you just step up and nail it. Warren Nelson was our favorite story talking to Coach Long. He was a guy that bounced from JV to varsity last year. Coach Long, they sent him down to JV to see how he would respond. He answered in a massive way. How about that answer? Are you kidding me, Ashton Washington? The glue guy, the X Factor, Mr. Energy, with a nice mid-range jumper to get it back to five. Thomas McElveen immediately calling timeout. He wants to draw something up at a five-point game. Now, I don't think we're going to see it run and gun as much. I think teams are going to try to set it up and, and, and get those points earned. Well, you mentioned the fact that maybe we don't really necessarily how to utilize the media timeout like they might. Well, it does add some more personal timeouts in your back pocket. They still got three after sure. that last one. It becomes really valuable with two to go. Talk a little bit more about Warren Nelson. You said that he felt like the guy that everyone's maybe not forgetting about, but with so yeah, much he just kind of Yeah, he kind of hides back a little bit. He's a, he's a, gets himself open. He's hanging out. You know where he's hanging out. You know, you know where he's going to hang out, somewhere on the perimeter. But it's almost like you forget about him because the flash and the electricity of Teal and Yannick and even you see her down low he's just a big body you've always got to pay attention to someone is bound to forget about Nelson and then he just daggers you with the three I mean that's that's the ideal shooter right there you, you don't want the shooter to be the center of attention on a team coach long told us he did he had that aha light bulb moment when he did get called back up he played with a different level of, I say anger but emotion that he was looking for out of him I don't know if you heard me mention it, but his nickname is Peanut. Another incredible attribute of Coach Long. He's got a nickname for every kid on the team. It's and he personal. puts them on the roster. It's right there on the roster for it. He has got an undying love for this team. He tells every kid when he gets off the bus, I love you, I love you, I love you, and gives him a hug. It's just something that you could tell with David Long how much it means to him to be coaching this team, to be coaching basketball. He's got a great team right here. He's built it. Well, there's the X Factor. Peanut Nelson, a tough finish up at the rim. Again, a great reverse layup. Two really important West Shore home points in the bank. You know, sometimes you don't want to send the guy to JV to demean him, but sometimes you just, that's a motivational tactic. Guys will just get better. They're going to be in the gym constantly working because they were sent down to JV. They don't want it to happen again. Now, I got no problem with this. These are two strong guys fighting for the ball after the whistle. You see him get tied up, but we'll take, give you another look. What a great backdoor player. 
Just a great, great play. Talking about executing on an inbound play. He got three head coaches, or just assistants, yep. and the brilliance of David Long. Great look, and they find 24. No question about it. I mean, like he said, Michael Jenkins just knows other teams to do the pre-scout so well. And Ben Snyder is just an encyclopedia of basketball knowledge. And he just gets to be a game manager. That's the best thing for him is he gets to be a game manager and decide when we're going to call timeout, what we're going to run out of it, and then let them draw the X's and O's up. Leading all of these guys in, a, in an opportunity to thrive. Talk about a dude that's been thriving tonight. Taz Williams loses his footing. Down seven with a minute 18, a costly turnover, but a little slipping and sliding. And it looks like we're going to get another Fort Dorchester timeout. 118 to go. Somerville's been able to push that lead back out to seven. Jack Longshaw alongside Scott Eisberg. A game that I think kind of you and I shook our head at halftime, like, all right, here they come. Somerville's going to roll these guys. They're too deep, they're too strong. Thomas McAdoo's group has not flinched an out. I mean, not at all. And now you're going to have to start deciding when do you start fouling? When do you want to kind of put them on the line? How do you want to handle that? That's kind of coach's decisions. But there's one thing that we do know. These kids are not going to give up until that clock's at zero. There is no way they're going to concede anything to Somerville. They're going to play this one out as hard as they possibly can. And the way they've made these little runs tonight, I, I wouldn't be shocked if we see a run here in the final minute. Wouldn't be shocked at all. With Kaz Williams, his ability to light it up from downtown. The fight of Ashton Washington we saw in that jump ball situation with Mel Teal. Don't expect Fort to go anywhere. Yannick Smith at the top of the key. You don't want to get called for a reach in. Play good defense, but don't get a reach in if you're not intending to foul. And this is where, Scotty, you mentioned no shot clock. The state of South Carolina hurts Fort Dorchester. Kaz Williams is going to foul Mel Teal. That's just the second of the quarter for Fort Dorchester. They need three more to get to the bonus. We've heard a ton of talk about the foul shot, the, the, the shot clock situation in South Carolina. When they played the preseason tournaments this year, uh, they played that showcase over at the North Charleston Athletic Center that said Weber put on. They played shot clock. They played with a 30-second clock because they wanted to get guys used to it because because they're going to show up at the college game and not know how to play with the shot clock so i think it's once they can get the technology and the cost taken care of for the schools i think we're going to eventually see a shot clock. it's a no-brainer is tony mcgill is going to get hit with his fourth foul a little one-on-one -on -one backyard basketball action as you saw yannick smith reaching into his bag of tricks boy he hits him with a little bit of a receiver shimmy he crosses the timeline. Yeah, you should have seen him getting open at some of these Shrine Bowl workouts. Getting open is not going to be an issue for Yannick Smith. He's got the quick first step. That's not a problem. But Somerville smart here, pulling it back out. They're trying to just kill the clock all they can. They've got a seven-point lead. Kill the clock. That's all you got to do. They get into the hands of their sharpshooter, K.J. Brown. Now officially in the bonus. That's actually a new rule in the state of South Carolina as well. It used to be fouls per half. Once you reach the bonus, then you play it through. They reset those fouls. No more one in one situations. It's a guaranteed two shots per quarter. KJ Brown will reap the benefits of these rapid repairs free throws. Your home needs repairs, call rapid repairs. In a seven point lead, KJ Brown looking to put the final nail in the coffin. Yeah, crowd's starting to file out now. Not often at a high school basketball game, you got to worry about traffic getting out. But with the <laughs> crowd we had here tonight, traffic could be an issue. They're trying to beat the crowds out. Well, that's what this Somerville team has done all year. You mentioned the Cedric Weber Invitational, the Round Ball Classic. They've gone and challenged themselves this year. Yeah, David Long said that in scheduling this year, it's not going to be easy when it comes to region, and it's certainly not going to be easy in the playoffs, and I think that steal is going to ice it right there, and the Fort Dorchester Patriots are going to back off. They're not going to foul at this point. 14-2 and two losses to Lexington and Atlantic Collegiate, nationally perennial, perennial powerhouse squads. Well, this Somerville Green Wave team we're making an impression, and they might be one of those powerhouses as well. The clock dwindles down. It's a 1-0 conference start for the number two team in the state. David Long's group 
able to hold on in the second half. Yeah, looking forward to talking to David Long here in a moment. We're going to present them the trophy and just kind of get his thoughts. It was a test for his team tonight. I think it shows that every night in this region, every Tuesday, every Friday, is going to be a test. You've just got to come out and answer the bell tonight. Somerville was supposed to win. Fort Dorchester gave it everything they had. I think this game played out the way we expected it to, but nothing to hang your head about if you're Fort Dorchester. Nine-point victory. Don't go anywhere. we got Scott and Coach Long with the trophy presentation. It's Will Lou Gray Opportunity School hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet. The rivalry, it lived up to the bill. Somerville with a 64-55 win. The number two team in the state with a kick of the team that preaches love. We go to Scott Eisberg with the trophy presentation. Jack, thank you very much. What a game for the Somerville Green Wave, a rivalry game. Where's Yannick Smith? 25 points, heck of a night. How did you feel out there tonight, Yannick? Um, I just feel like I had a rhythm. Um, me and my teammates, I was just feeling good with my teammates, just playing basketball. Didn't have a rhythm. You had three dunks before I could even open my eyes in this game. That was pretty impressive. Defense, oh, get our defense, oh, yeah, get us stopped. And we're just doing good in our defense and getting turnovers and scoring in transition. Beautiful. David Long, where's David Long, head coach? Coach, you were just so calm all night long, just sitting there on the bench, calmly watching and waiting. But your team, they held them off. I mean, it was a nice run by Fort Dorchester, but you held them off. Uh, how proud are you of this group tonight? Very proud of this group. We executed the game plan, jumped on them, had the game right where we wanted, faced some adversity. But that's part of the reason we had a tough schedule. We wanted to be challenged and battled, so it set us up to be able to handle this tough adversity tonight in such a difficult place to play in front of the big crowd and under the lights of News 4. <laughs> when you look forward now, what are the big things that you've got to work on? What are the things that you're going to touch on in practice before next Tuesday? Rebounding and trapping better. <laughs> uh, we did a pretty good job of that early, and that gave us the lead. We got away from it in the second half, and it let them back in the game. David Long, Yannick Smith, our player of the game right here with the Somerville Green Wave. I'm going to give you a trophy, then we're going to take it back and give you the real trophy this week when the actual thing is engraved on it. So let's give it to these guys right now. Yeah, this is all for TV. <laughs> he told Coach Long, he told us. The player of tonight's game, the Holy City hitting an air. We provide solutions for every season. The coolest player of the night, Yannick Smith. A cool 25, three dunks in that first quarter. An alley-oop that you're going to see on top 10 plays without question. But how do you not talk about head coach David Long some more? He tells you, 
I love you. I love you to every guy that gets off of that bus. Well, we at Sinclair Broadcasting and Channel 4, we love watching this team play, the continuity, the absolute love for the game that they play together. Um, to have myself, Scott Eisberg, Somerville with a 64-55 victory tonight. We'll see you next week. A lot of Kaz Williams from Thomas McElveen's bunch, but I'll tell you right now, that play right there, da-da-da, da-da-da. Yannick Smith with 25. Melvin Teal, a model of consistency with 12, with 7, and 6. There's some superstars in a low country without question. Waiting for Scotty to join me so he can give you a little bit of sign off. But we'd like to say thank you to all of our sponsors. Will Lou Gray, Crew Chevrolet, Miller Dawson, Siegel and Ward, Dr. Zinplant, Mr. Sparky, Rapid Repairs, Holy City Heating and Air, West Shore Home. Without all of you, we couldn't make these magical moments like we saw the Green Wave picking up their teammate in DJ Grant. We take fi one final look in and head coach David Long is we unfortunately won't have them on our slate the rest of the season but every Friday night high school hoops is going to be live right here on abcnews4.com Mike TV Charleston YouTube next week we'll see you at North Charleston little Philip Simmons and the Iron Horses with a region foe as well Scotty we've